Hi, my name is Kevin Ahern. I'm your instructor for BB451 551 this term. And I wanted to make this video to uh, introduce myself, uh, to welcome you to the course, uh, give you a few uh, thoughts about uh, ways to approach studying for the course. And finally, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So uh, uh, hopefully get all that done without too much uh, jabber on my part. Um, BB 451 slash 551 is, as you know, the second uh, course in a two-term series, the first being BB 450 slash uh, 550. In BB 451 slash 551, we focus uh, primarily in two areas of biochemistry, one on metabolism uh, for about the first half of the uh, term, and the second half of the term is uh, devoted to the molecular biology, uh, the process by which uh, DNA is replicated, the, uh, the DNA is transcribed into RNA, and the RNA is made into protein. So uh, that's the sort of general uh, outline uh, of the course. Um, BB451, I think you'll see like BB450, and I, 551, of course, goes uh, on, the, on the end of that as well, uh, is a course that has a lot of material. Uh, biochemistry has a lot of material. I think there's no escaping that. Um, Biochemistry is uh, what I like to refer to as the molecular basis of life. Uh, it is um, all the way from the small uh, molecules uh, like oxygen with two atoms, all the way up to the gigantic proteins with hundreds of thousands of atoms, and these are molecules. And even though we think of things like gigantic proteins, they're still minuscule uh, compared to the size of a single cell. So when you hear people talk about microbiology or biology, they're talking about things that are way, way bigger than uh, the things we talk about in biochemistry. So even though a protein might be pretty gigantic, it's pretty minuscule within the confines uh, of a cell. So the molecular basis of life is important because we know today that the traits and everything that we have associated with life ultimately have their roots in molecules. And so we're trying to make uh, some sense of that uh, in this course. BB451, of course, is one that I have taught for uh, quite a few years. Uh, in fact, it was the very first large course I ever taught at Oregon State. Uh, that was back in about 1995, uh, probably before many of you uh, were actually born. Uh, so it's a, but it's a class that I have great affection for, and it's a class that I've met some wonderful students. I've made some great uh, friends uh, out of this course, actually, as well. So. It's something that I have uh, truly enjoyed. It's been a very important part uh, of my career. Technically, I'm retired, so it may seem a little weird, but um, I am finishing up a, a part-time appointment to uh, teach uh, some e-campus classes, and this is one of those classes uh, that I'm teaching. And it, I've had some, uh, as they say, some great interactions with students, and that's why uh, I'm continuing to teach uh, after I uh, retire. Um, I get asked a lot by students to give advice in terms of how do I study for the course, et cetera, et cetera. And so my basic advice is that you don't change anything about the way that you study for this course compared to any other course. Um, what works for you in those courses will likely work for you in this course. Um, biochemistry uh, has a lot of material, but people tell me they have their own learning styles. And so for me to say, well, this is the way that you should learn or this is the way you should approach it, probably is uh, not consistent with well, the ways that uh, people learn the subject. So I really don't have any advice about studying uh, in that sense. I do have advice uh, in terms of the course content, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. When you look on the class schedule page, you'll see that I've provided a variety of resources uh, for you, including the um, uh, figures that are used in all the lectures. You can download those and use them as you see fit. And I recommend actually downloading them before you watch the videos, uh, not after. That way you can make marks on them and so forth as necessary as you're going through and uh, taking your uh, notes. The, um, the course uh, also has uh, what I, uh, the, obviously the videotaped lectures that I made for uh, the class. They were uh, videotaped as I was giving the lecture, uh, as you'll see. Uh, to uh, students in my uh, classroom class. So you have exactly the same content that the students in the classroom class had. And I think that uh, uh, helps you to feel, obviously, that you're getting the, the, the right material, which is very important. The third thing I provide uh, on the uh, schedule page are links to what I call highlights. And these are uh, the written summaries that I have of what I thought was important about what I lectured about. And so 
I actually use the highlights as my own guideline in writing exams. And so I recommend to students that you focus on the highlights as your starting point uh, for looking at uh, and studying uh, for the exams, because I think you'll find uh, that to be uh, of uh, somewhat help to you. The uh, class uh, is um, obviously uh, online. The class uh, has all uh, proctoring done by a service called Proctorio. And if you haven't used Proctorio before, I've got a test thing on there for you to check out and make sure that everything is working for you. I do have students uh, sometimes, occasionally, have problems with Proctorio, and it usually relates to not having the uh, correct or the most current um, of the, um, of the uh, assistant programs that are necessary uh, the, the, uh, for you to, uh, to run the program, so make sure that you follow all the guidelines uh, from the uh, Proctorio in terms of what you need to have on your computer in order to run, and also have a good internet connection. Um, uh, once you get disconnected from the exam, for example, you can't go back in. So it's important to uh, get that uh, connection as solid as you can, uh, in a good place uh, as you can. Um, let's see, the last thing I'll tell you about is a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in a little tiny farm town of about 200 people in the Midwest, uh, West Central Illinois specifically, a little town called Fowler, Illinois that nobody ever heard of because Fowler only had 200 people in it. And so uh, I was one of those 200 people when I left the town uh, as a kid, uh, the population of the town <laughs> dropped by a decent percentage just be based on the fact that the town was so small. Uh, the town uh, was a very big part of me and I think for anybody who grew up in a small town, I think you can relate to that as well. Um, I can relate to uh, people who grew up in small towns, for example, who come to universities and feel kind of lost um, because uh, small towns, uh, university is overwhelming uh, when you're comparing uh, the um, small town experience to what you're having at the university. The university, of course, is great, uh, but um, that adjustment sometimes uh, can be a big deal. Um, what else about me? I can tell you that I got my Ph.D. from Oregon State in 1986. Uh, so I'm a beaver through and through. Um, I uh, lived in Corvallis basically since about 1981. So this year makes 40 years for me uh, living in Corvallis. Uh, I spent two years in San Diego where I did postdoctoral work at the University of California at San Diego and came right back to Corvallis because I really enjoy uh, the university, I enjoy the state of Oregon, and I, I love the city of Corvallis as well. So I feel, I feel very fortunate to, to be here. I also feel very fortunate to uh, be able to work with uh, talented students like yourselves. So this is a, a great thing uh, for me. Um, let's see. Uh, so I will tell you, I am trying one thing uh, new this term, and that's I'm doing hourly, or I'm, sure, I'm doing weekly uh, Zoom sessions. Uh, Zoom sessions for this class are on Fridays uh, at 1 p.m., and they're uh, scheduled inside of Canvas, so you can always uh, find them inside of Canvas. The very first of them uh, starting in what we call week zero, uh, which is the very first week of class. Uh, because it's only a partial week, we call it week zero. And that's uh, starting on the 22nd. The first Zoom session uh, is uh, on the 24th uh, of September. So I hope to see you there. Now, the Zoom sessions are there for you to ask questions. I don't come in with anything prepared to say. Uh, I'm there to help you and interact with you as I can. So bring your questions to that. I'm happy to help you. If you find that you want other help, like let's say uh, email, or sometimes people want to call, or sometimes people want to FaceTime one-on-one -on -one and so forth, uh, I'm happy to do that as well. So uh, whatever I can do to help you to learn, uh, it's important to me uh, to do, because uh, your learning is very, very important to me. And it's been um, a wonderful uh, time I've had helping students to do that over the years. And I love curious and interested and motivated young people. So uh, I. Uh, that's where I, I guess I will leave that. So uh, I hope you have a great term. I uh, hope that uh, if uh, I can be of help to you, that you will let me know. And with that, I will uh, say good night and get ready for you uh, for week zero Zoom on September 24th. Take care. <laughs>